Hey everybody, it's Andre from the Eagles Hall Field Guide. I'm here with a fielder, Teresa. Hi, Teresa, how are you? Hi, Andre, how are you? Good, good. And you're in the Charlotte area, right? Yes, I am. And you work with practices all around the Charlotte area with helping them with uh, things like we're gonna be talking about today, right? Correct. Awesome. So what we thought we'd talk about today, guys, is um, posting EOBs, posting insurance checks really small slice of the daily routine, but it's something with so many new users to Eaglesoft, this is one of those things that, you know, if you get it right, you get it right and everything works out fine. If you don't get it right, there's residual issues where if you don't post it correctly, there's gonna be issues. Um, so what I thought I'd do is take the EOB that you see on the left side of your screen and post it to the account. Um, and we're just gonna kind of talk about it, how we kind of do this process, right? And you probably okay. go through this on a regular basis, uh, going through how to post these things, right? Yes, I kind of review it with my ops managers and there's times that I need a refresher on making sure that this is correct. <laughs> sure. So one of the first things I like to do is, you know, you typically if we get an EOB and it's just a single patient, it's, it's a great day. But, you know, most of our EOBs now are multiple patients from you know, multiple families on one EOB, but we're gonna just do this one as if it's on one EOB to make things easier. So let's pull up this patient. And if you guys can see, the name is right there on the EOB. It says Charles Average. So we're gonna put in three letters of the last name, a couple letters of the first name and hit tab on my keyboard, which should find my patient. And this guy's got an unassigned credit, but I'm not gonna assign it right now. We're just gonna start posting some uh, of these payments. So here's Charles, he's highlighted, all right? I'm looking at his account. I can see there's still $840.35 that's out to insurance. Uh, he, he, the patient has a balance of, I'm sorry, the family has a balance of $365.15 and I can see the breakout for each of those. So there's Charles's balance, there's Mary's balance, and there's Tim, the son's balance down there which equals that 368.15. So that's the way I always start by looking at the account before I do anything else. I wanna look at if there's any notes there, you know, maybe there's a note from somebody else in the office that said, you know, uh, they promised to bring me a check tomorrow, so I don't need to send a statement out, something like that. So uh, that's kind okay. of the first thing I look at when I'm looking at an account. Then I'm gonna go over to my insurance payment tab and I can see this guy's got a bunch of um, outstanding claims. And this claim um, is for data service January 19th, 2006. So okay. not, January 19th, 2006. Um, and guess what? None of these correspond. So <laughs> I think I, made, I probably made this incorrect. <laughs> I made this up last night, guys. So let me just see which one this is for. This is for exam for Bitemus and Profi. Maybe that's not the right person. I thought I had done this right for the right person. <laughs> That's so funny. Maybe I didn't. Let's see if it's for Mary. Mm. Or for Tim. There it is. Okay. <laughs> it's for Tim. Okay. There, back to where we're at. Okay. So, and you guys can see that my amounts here, that $30 at $41.25 and the $59.25 are my um, allowance amounts. It's because I use coverage books and fee schedules, and that's a whole different video. And you guys, if you want to see that, that's another video that you can look at. But you can see that my estimations for that 30, 41, and 59, um, it's showing that the insurance hasn't paid, but it estimated it at 100%. And I look at my EOB, and it looks like they paid 100%. 30, 41, 59, it looks like it's all correct. So what I typically do is put my check number in, and of course there's no real check number on here, so let's just make it up because you have some long, ridiculous check numbers, right? <laughs> it always corrects me uh -huh. the crazy long check numbers. And I'm gonna put the total amount of the check, 130, 50. And notice that is by default checked because this is the final payment that I received on this. Now, if they had not paid me for the bite wings and only paid me for the two other services, I would have left that unchecked to keep the claim open for that portion just so I could um, have the claim of still available to take that payment. Um, the other thing okay. is, this is, I, I don't even know why this is here, but there's a, a portion here where I can print a receipt for this payment. 
but I don't know that mm -hmm. I would ever print a receipt for an insurance payment. So just so okay. everybody knows. Um, and you can see Eaglesoft automatically divvied up the money. It gave $30 there, $41.25 there, and $59.25 there. Really, really important to everybody that you're, you're watching. Um, Eaglesoft's going to put it here, but you don't have to keep it there. If this is not exactly how the insurance company paid, you should be divvying that money up in the right place, right? Right. So we're going to save this and it will close out the claim, but I don't want to close it because I want to actually bring up another EOB and let's pretend that it wasn't paid this way. Cause this would be, it wouldn't it be really nice if this is the way that I always yeah. <laughs> And what, what, what percentage of time do you think you see that you see where they pay exactly how things are going to go? I'll say maybe 50%. Yeah, I agree. Is that being generous? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah you're, you're being good, yeah, but that's nice. That's all right. And the other thing I want people to see is um, there are remark codes on the right side of this EOB. And of course, I just made this up. But I want you guys to keep an eye on those remark codes because we're going to utilize those as we go further to be able to make some notes in the account so that we can clean things up going forward. So I'm going to clear this out. All right, and I'm going to grab another EOB, EOB partial pay. And I'm going to drag this over here onto this screen so we can have it over here. All right, now, same patient, same services, but um, the evaluation, bite wings, and um, profi, um, one of those things was not paid in, a, in full. So they only paid $10, no, I'm sorry, they skipped the bite wings. So they paid for the exam and they paid for the profi, but they didn't pay for the bite wings. And again, if, when I look at that code, it says uh, D321, I don't, you know, I made that up. And it says plan pays for only one uh, x-ray in 12 months, not billable procedure. So we can't even bill this to the patient according to the contract okay. and everybody's going to have a different system. So let's go back here and put our check number and let's put our total amount of check 89.25. And like, it, like I said before, notice how Eaglesoft divvied the money up. So it wants to okay. divvy up the money, but it didn't divvy it up properly. Okay. So I'm going to change this one because they paid $30 on this and they paid zero on this and this one they paid 59.25 bada bing total assigned total unassigned is zero and they did not pay this i want to close this claim out so that this is a finished claim and so that we show that this 41.25 has got to be written off make okay. sense so yeah. let's save this all right and it says at the top here do I want to apply this 4125 back to the patient's account so that they're responsible for it? Or do I want to no. credit the account, the 4125, in order to zero out this balance on this? And you can see that it's only looking for $7.21, so 725 to be um, written off. So I want to put the full 4125 as the amount to get rid of. Okay. Couple couple things. Um, a lot of people are confused about the ability to recreate a claim um, and having to go back into the claim. There is an option that I can recreate the claim right here. Instead of having to close this out, go back in, close it out, come back in. The other thing is this second line will apply any amount. Um, so this 41.25, it'll apply it back to the remaining benefits. Okay. So initially it took it off of the remaining benefits, but it can apply it back on showing that the insurance company hasn't used any of the, has, hasn't used that 4125. And okay. updating any deductible amount can be done here. All right. And then this will actually assign these services to the current balance. So the, the way I have my system set up is um, when insurance companies pay, the balance becomes current as of the time the insurance is fulfilled. And then it starts to okay. age from there. And that's a choice. So everybody should know that. So when I hit okay, okay, all right, it's starting to divvy the money up. It's taking that 4125 from Dr. Gray from his production. And I'm gonna save that, all right. And it has closed the claim, 
But here's the part that I want to do with this code that we have over here. I'm going to go up here to my notes. And bring it into this screen. And I'm going to create an account note. And I have auto notes. And all of my auto notes are in my system. And typically what I have is auto notes that actually match these codes. Oh. Yep. So I actually would, and I'm just going to make one up here. So I would make a D321. Okay. Uh, uh, United Accordion Insurance. Deny. of frequency on x-rays. Uh, I would be a little bit nicer about the way I do this. And right. I would create an, uh, yeah, I know, uh, if I wasn't on film. Uh, and I'm gonna create a um, patient-friendly way of saying that they denied it. And it's pretty much what they send here is plan benefits. And I'm not gonna type out the whole thing, but I would actually create an auto note here that I can just reuse anytime I get a denial from the insurance company. Okay. And I'm going to display that on the account statement. So the minute the patient gets the account statement, imagine if it said something like um, patients not covered for fluoride because they're over 14 years old. So what? they're going to get an EOB that they're going to ignore. And then they're going to get a bill from me for $59 for the fluoride and have no idea why. So if I put yep. that denial code there, they'll have it both places. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And I'll close that out and save the note. So my spell check is on, so ignore a few things there. <laughs> and now it's part of the account. Because again, remember I told you, as soon as I come into an account, I'm looking for my notes and right. why something happened. Now this EOB gets filed away. And the beauty of it, this is, the beauty of it is, if the patient ever calls and says, um, hey, you know, why do I owe you 4125? And I know we wrote it, wrote this off, but if imagine the patient was responsible, I could say, well, uh, I got a note from your insurance company back on July 6, and it said that the plan benefits didn't cover you for, you know, for the x-rays twice in 12 months. So no reason for me. No, to you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to dig for what you're looking for. Exactly. Yeah, I learned that years ago because I used to keep my EOBs. I think everybody my age in dentistry used to keep the EOBs in a box under your desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rand around it or something like that. And I just found that, you know, it was easier to be able to look here than to have to go in the storeroom to find some old EOB. So I always put my notes there. So no matter what happened, I could just look at my account to, to know anything about it. And if it's, a, can, if it's going to be one of those notes that we use over and over and over again, like a denial for frequency, just make one up. Yep. Like that idea? I like that. I'm, I'm going to share that. Go for it. And now let's pull up another EOB. And I'm going to drag that over there. So here's an EOB for um, scaling and root planning that was done in uh, July of 2005. Imagine getting paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah, good luck with that one. And let's yeah. see who this is for. This must be for Charles. Okay. There it is. I finally got one right. So now we have an EOB and this one's for Charles and it has a copay due. So again, I'd be putting in the check number, the total amount of the payment, 31550. And this is a final payment. And it divvied the money up pretty well. Yeah, it did a good job. But the patient's going to be responsible for uh, the 31, I mean, sorry, $32 uh, difference. Okay. And somebody's calling me. <laughs> so now I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm not adjusting the account because the patient's going to be responsible for. Okay. All right. I'm going to go up to my notes and add an account note. Uh, pay me my darn money. Something, something, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to include it's that in the statement. <laughs> yeah, you, you notice I said I haven't worked in a dental office in a long time, so I can say anything I want. I'll save that. Yes, note. you can. <laughs> 
I will live vicariously through you. There you go. Just say Andre said I could do that. Yep. And now that account has that note and that's going to be something if you want to create a statement that at that time or like for me in my office we run statements every day so automatically this patient would get a new statement so that's the easy clean way to do these statements um, and an easy clean way to post the, the charges now these are pretty simple you know eobs you would agree wouldn't, wouldn't you Teresa? Yeah. yeah 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 I mean, there's a whole lot more complicated ones, but this is, you know, this is kind of basic, basic, basic. So if you're brand new to doing this, you know, most of the EOBs that come in are pretty, you know, standard and they're pretty easy to follow through. But if you're, you know, if, if it's a little bit more complicated, um, there are some steps. Uh, some, of the, some of the things that you see, some of the things that I see, like um, where we estimated the patient, I mean, the insurance would pay for, like the example we used, fluoride on a 15-year-old, and now they're not going to cover it. Yeah. That's, that's a little confusing. Um, posterior composites, those things can be confusing. So, but, you know, if you stick to the ideas that we're talking about in this video, you should have uh, an easy time uh, posting these types of EOBs. Um, anything that's a little more complicated, you know, there's a whole group of fielders who are out there able to help. Or if you're in the Charlotte area, you can, you can call, <laughs> call Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say I heard it from Andre. <laughs> <laughs> well, does that, make, does that make sense? Was that a good overview of things? I, I like that. I like the uh, addition of the um, auto note so that that way, no matter who's looking at the account, they can automatically see what was, um, what was charged out and why the patient is owed what or owing what they owe. I yeah. think that makes complete sense. A yeah, lot and less work. There are, there are um, limitations to the number of characters you can use. Um, and in the auto, I'm sorry, in, in the field guide, um, there are a ton of my auto notes and I use what I call um, administrative auto notes. And I'm gonna try to pull it up over okay. on my screen. And let's see if this will open in this field. So I have like all these preset, um, things set up so insurance denials those things so that you can just pop them right into the system and that way you don't okay. have to worry about it so you can actually you, you see I've actually set up so it's 64 characters I think 60, okay I think 66 is a maximum number so something like this uh, where they denied because the, the max has been reached so you can p paste that right into the um, into the account notes and include it in the Now, statement. is this on the files on under the Andre's field guide? Yep. Yep. So if you look for okay. admin okay. notes, you'll see it. Um, here, look, actually, I'll pull it up so everybody can see where it is. It's uh, in the field guide under files. And Andre's admin notes are in here someplace, but this is the place it is. I won't bore you guys with looking for it. But if Perfect. you look for admin notes, it's definitely in the, in the, the file section. All right. Well, I really appreciate this. Sure. My pleasure. I'm glad you spent a couple minutes with me. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks for all of your valuable information. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Question for you. If anybody has any questions for you, is there a way that they can get in touch with you too? Yes, they can reach me um, through uh, Teresa at rimalsdentistry.com. Sounds good. Thank you for your help and enjoy the rest of your day. You as well. Take care. Bye.